Hey guys, welcome to another episode of DNS Adventures. In last week's video, we talked about different upgrades and tips to help our lives as we travel on the road. And today we're gonna to be talking about helpful tips and upgrades that we use to keep our rig here at our home base. Yes! So jumping right into this video, one of the first things we realized when we moved out here in the middle of nowhere, Virginia, that bugs and different animals and stuff are trying to get into our RV to make themselves some shelter. So one of the first things we did here was put on these little covers that go in front of our water heater and also in front of our furnace because wasps and different things like to make nest in any hole and cavity possible. So wherever you have a hole or a cavity into your RV, try to seal it off. Another thing that we did here in our rig was put some um, mesh over our entries into our little refrigerator area because stink bugs, ladybugs, we still try to get through all these little cracks. You might not be able to prevent all of them, but as long as you block off most of the areas for them to get in here, it seems to prevent most of those guys from getting in. And also another place, if you have a fifth wheel, is to make sure you put some netting or some sort of um, cavity up here so birds don't make nest inside there or wasp nest etc because they they tend to build it wherever they possibly can this will seem obvious to many of you but getting yourself a nice pair well not pair two pairs well depending on how many tires you and how many axles you got of tire covers make sure you got some tire covers for your tires is what i'm trying to say that'll protect them from damaging uv light and also just keeping them dry and out of nature's fury as best as you can but one thing to remind yourself of, and I found out myself, is that if you have these tire covers on for a prolonged period of time, make sure you take them off every once in a while and see if there's anything trying to live underneath there. Because stink bugs seem to like to make the little house inside these tire covers as well. As I mentioned in the previous video, all the upgrades and tips that we had to keep us on the road, this is something that is definitely dual purpose. If you have your RV in storage and you live in another area that has high humidity or something, definitely keep your RV as humidity controlled if possible as you can. And if you don't have an electric hookup, they make different moisture absorbing devices that you can buy that do not require electricity. So just make sure you have some sort of system in place to try to keep the humidity level in your RV down. Otherwise, you will start seeing mold growing in places you do not want it to grow. So this is actually another one of those things that could have actually gone on my first video as well. But having some baking soda in your fridge or freezer to be able to help keep those scents down is a, is a must because just like a fridge at home or a freezer at home, if you don't clean it for an extended period of time or if it's just closed for an extended period of time, some of those scents tend to be trapped in there and this helps absorb some of those scents so you don't get some weird taste in your food. So another tip rather than an upgrade is to remove all basically cloth materials from your RV when you're not using your RV so animals are not using it as nesting material and it's not another place to collect mold. So to go along with the last video, this humidity sensor is also good for when you're storing your RV somewhere or if you aren't using it as much, just so you can keep an eye on humidity and temperature. And it's important to get something that shows a little bit of a history, a high and a low of recent temperatures and humidities. So in case something were to go wrong, whatever you're using to control it, you can see. So it was at this data point at some point in the past, but now it's here. It's pretty helpful to have. Another special tip is to make sure you keep your RV roof clean. There's about an inch of snow on here right now, which is just fine. But if you have a bunch of debris and stuff on your RV and you let it deteriorate over time, it'll start to discolor your roof and also start to damage your rubber roof if you have a rubber roof. And it'll also start to damage all the seals that keep the moisture out of your RV. Another little upgrade or equipment to help you out is to buy a roof rake. Because if you get a bunch of snow load on top of your RV, these RV roofs are not hand rated to handle a bunch of weight on top of them. A snow rake is also pretty handy because you don't have to actually get on your roof to clear it off. So you don't have to worry about slipping and sliding off a 10 or 11 foot roof. And make sure if you do get a snow rake or something, get something with a plastic and not a metal edge so you aren't tearing into that rubber roof that you have or scratching your metal roof, whichever. So one more tip, not necessarily an upgrade, is to make sure you have some good tools. One tool we use 
almost every single time, every single week we're in the RV is a torque wrench. So make sure you have a nice quality torque wrench and depending on your torque specifications on things you need to keep torque, make sure you have a torque wrench that's big enough to be able to handle all your situations. That way you don't have to carry around multiple torque wrenches with you. Another fairly important tool to have, especially if you're a DIYer and try to do your own work, is a multimeter because these RVs, again, they're home on wheels, they bounce around, things break and things get loose. So if you're having some electrical issues, having a multimeter to figure out where the source of your issue is, so you might be able to do some fixing yourself rather than putting your RV into a RV workshop for like two months waiting to get it back. You might be able to just order some parts and fix it yourself in a much quicker period of time. One thing I'm gonna have to fix soon is our fridge. Our fridge temperature sensor went bad and I was able to figure out that the temperature sensor went bad and not something else because that multimeter pointed to where the voltage was no longer going through. So having that around to be able to diagnose your own issues and fix it yourself could save you a lot of money. And not just save you a lot of money, but a lot of time. Well guys, I've been rushing through these videos because I do not know how long this GoPro video will last in the cold, so sorry if I've been spitting out things too fast for you to comprehend. <laughs> but if you do have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer, the, answer those to the best of my ability. If I talked about any products that we owned, I'll try to put links to those in the description if I can find them online somewhere. Well guys, if you liked this video, found it helpful, Go ahead and click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos like it, share it with other people that like to RV. That's pretty helpful to us and we appreciate it. But we will see you guys in the next one and hopefully the next one we'll actually be able to go do something outside as far as work goes because I'm tired of the snow already and, and I guess that's just winter for you.